we go. Two circles S and C touch each other internally at the point B as shown. The equation of S is this one here, alright? Find the coordinates of the center S. So you do, you do, uh, so technically you're doing this. Right, so you're doing x minus h squared, uh, y minus k squared equals uh, r squared, okay? And what you're going to say is that h equals uh, 1, where you should have h, you have 1, and where you should have k equals minus 6, and then the center is 1 minus 6. Is that cool, you guys? Okay. Now, Next thing, uh, see the way r squared equals 360, so what does that mean? r equals the square root of 360, square root that and you get 6 root 10. We all good so far? Okay. Now, uh, okay. we know that this is 1 minus 6, don't we? How do we kill it that? And we know that it's one third the radius. So this length here, see this uh, see this green length? What can we say about that green length? Anybody? The green length is one one third of the pink length. Does that make sense? Or it's two thirds of the way across. Are you happy enough with that? But what point does it want? It gives us B. What's B lads? Would everybody agree that B is 7, 12? Yeah? No. Would everybody agree that if I was to call this, uh, I need to name the center, i call this point A. See A to B. A to B is, uh, sorry, A to K is two thirds A to B. Does that make sense? If the green length is one third, that means the blue part will be two thirds of that length. Does that make sense to you? Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the distance from, we're going to get the distance from 712 to 1 minus 6. What you do, you add 6 to the x value, and how much do you add to the y value? How do you go from minus 6 all the way up to plus 12? Is that okay? Now, the boy want to go from here to here. How much, how much distance is that? It's two thirds the distance. How do I know it's two thirds the distance? Does anybody remember? How do I know it's two thirds of that distance? Because this uh, radius is one third of that length, therefore the yellow line must be two thirds of its length. Okay? Now what's two thirds of six? So as when you multiply two thirds by six, what you get? 4. 4 to x. 2 thirds of 18. So add 4 and add 12. What happens when you add 4 and 12 to the two of these? 5, 6. Is that cool, you guys? 5, 6. Okay. Now, what's 1 third the radius? 2 root 10 because the blue line is one third the pink line. Do you get that? The blue part is one third the pink part. Okay? You lower down the blind. Or Aaron, you lower down the blind. Okay. So, we know that the center is 5, 6, and we know that the range is 2 root 10. This way is the quickest way to get the answer. So what do we get? Anybody? X minus 5 squared plus... Oh lads, this, this hurt. What's 2 root 10 squared? What's 2 root 10 multiplied by 2 root 10? 40, the amount of you step put down 20. 
You? Mm. Didn't expect it off you, to be honest. All right. Uh, any questions so far? Did any just get an ask about anything? What we're going to do next is we're going to get the common tangent, all right? And the common tangent isn't as, isn't as hard as you think. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the... Uh, would everybody agree that the common tangent is this one here? Yeah? And is it possible that we can get the uh, slope of the green line? How do you get the slope of the green line? It's 5, 6, 2. Would you agree it's 5, 6 to 7, 12? Okay, one second. Nope, I do not want you. No. Sorry, I'm just going to copy and paste it over first. So let me see what we're doing. Okay, guys, you ready? Now, uh, what is... Okay, let's get the slope of A to B. Is that okay? So, oh, this, this hurt as well. Lads, a lot of you's got your Y's and your X's mixed up. It's, it's one minus six. Right. Oh, A is one minus six, is it? Yeah. Oh, that was five, six, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, either one would be the same line, wouldn't it? But yeah, that's uh, one minus six, yeah. Sorry, that's one minus six for A. Okay, so let's do it this way. Some of you's got your slopes upside down, and it was really painful to see a mistake like that. Which is unfortunate. And then underneath it, lads. Everybody happy with slope of three? What's the perpendicular slope? No, all you knew that. Now this part is where stuff happened as well, unfortunately, okay? Now, it's going to be Y. What point is on the tangent? What point do we have to use? Anybody? Huh? 7, 12. So, Y minus 12. Okay, now here's the issue with this. See the tree on the bottom? See that tree? That multiplies the other side, the y minus 12. It's division of tree on the right, which is multiplication of tree on the left. So what do we get there? And then into there. A few of you have made a mistake there, unfortunately. 36, thank you. So did I. And then what happens when you move it all over one side? X was true, oh, oh this hurt as well. What's minus 36 minus 7? It's not minus 40, it's not minus 42, it's minus 43. Once again, there was un some unexplainable hiccups right at the end, okay? Do it reasonably quickly, okay? So once again, here's what you get. You have a circle, okay? And... For argument's sake, I'm just going to draw it anywhere, uh, just here. Okay. Now, there's a point. Ten seven is on it. You're ten seven. I don't know. You're you're zero zero. Six point five. Ugh. You're zero zero. You're six point five seven. Okay. 6.50. You all okay with that? Now, how many people attempted it like this? Where you get the uh, perpendicular bisector. So you, you, you basically get the equation of a line that goes through the midpoint of any chord. Alright? And then what about here, guys? You get you get another you get you join two of these lines together and you get another one that goes through the perpendicular bisector and therefore you're able to attain the centre of the circle using a simultaneous equation. Who tried it that way of interest? None of you guys did it that way. Alright, Charlie did it, and maybe one or two others, alright? 
Uh, right, I'll, I'll, I'll fly through it really quickly, so, all right? So, uh, we call you A, we call you B, we call you C. You're going to use the slope formulas. Okay, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Everybody okay with that? All right. Now, we're going to, when we do that, we're going to get the slope of... Uh, we're going to get the slope of AC. Actually, Charlie also used AC, which is something like that. And then the perpendicular bisector of AC goes through the middle. Basically, any perpendicular bisector of any two points goes through the middle. You only need two of them to make it work. Okay? So, if I take... Uh, so, Charlie decided to get the perpendicular bisector of AC. Is that okay with you guys? So, you get the perpendicular bisector of AC. Slope AC is... Uh, Slope AC is 7 over 10. Is everybody happy you can use the slope formula for A and C? Is that alright? What else do I have to do with A and C? Can anybody remember? What else do I have to do with A and C? Come on lads, you should be able to know this. What do you have to do with A and C? You find the midpoint. Is everybody able to use the midpoint formula? You would know this from early second year. Or even first year in some cases, and the midpoint of AC, AC would be five and three and a half. Is that okay, with you guys? What's the perpendicular slope then? Huh? Yeah. So you're you're creating a line that goes through the midpoint, which is five three and a half. And it's basically, it goes perpendicular. And see the way it goes through the center of the circle? Okay, that's what you're trying to create. So we're currently creating the red line. The red line is what we're currently working on, okay? So we're going to do y minus y1. Now here's where a lot of people at home, probably the lads at home made the mistake. What point do I have to use for this red line? I have to use the red point, which is the midpoint, which is 5 amps. Three and a half. Is that okay with you guys? And you do y minus 3.5 equals, turn that up, change the sign, which is minus 10 over 7 into what? Was it minus 10 over 7 into x minus 5? Is that okay with you guys? Look, I'm gonna, it's going to move this a bit faster. You cross multiply, arrange it all to one side, and you'll get 10x plus 7y equals, I think it's 74.5. Is that okay with you guys? Right, now we have the equation of the red line. Next thing you can do, actually, while we're here, you could go, you could do the exact same technique for BC, couldn't you? Okay. You could do the exact same technique for BC, but there is a bit of a shortcut here, isn't there? Does anybody see the shortcut? That's really easy. I'll show you now. Do you see the way the two of these have the same y value? So Charlie, this is actually of use to you. See the way the two of these have the same y value? So essentially what you're doing is, what's the midpoint of, uh, what's the midpoint of 0, 0 and 6.50? Anybody tell me? Huh? Exactly. And therefore, what has to be the perpendicular bisector if it's going straight up into the air? Can anybody tell me? See that green line? That's the line x equals 3.25. It's perpendicular, isn't it? To a, it's perpendicular to the x-axis. So all I'd have to do here is just say, do you know what? x is 3.25. And that's 7y equals 74.5. And then I'd get what's 32.5. Uh, plus 7y equals, what's it, 74.5. What does y turn out to be again? 6, is it? Yeah, 7y equals 42, y equals 6. What does that mean about the centre of the circle, lads? What's the centre of the circle, then? What is that? 3.25 and 6. I'd still need to find the radius, wouldn't I? 
How do you find the radius? Is everybody happy I'll just do the distance formula? Is everybody happy I'll do the distance formula? Using what two points? Using the centre of the circle and any point that's on the circle. I could use this one, I could use that one, or I could use that one. Is that okay with you guys? And when you do the uh, radius, oh, I can do it at the back. <laughs> so when I do the radius, I think I get the square root of uh, 745 over 16. So the radius will be the square root of uh, 745 all over 16. How do I get the formula now, lads? What's the formula for the circle? What is it? X minus H squared, Y minus K squared equals R squared. Uh, what's that going to be? That is uh, what's it? <coughs> X minus squared, yeah, plus yeah, equals root seven forty five. Uh, sorry, see that? Two, 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 two. One second. Yeah. Sorry, that's actually over four. Sorry, my fault. Just made a mistake there. That's over 4. The 4 is not included in the square root. Is that okay with you guys? It's not the square root of 745 all over 4. The 4 is not included in the square root. And then when you square it out, you get a set root 745 all over 16. Oh, sorry, 745 over 16. Because the square root disappears. Alright, lads, now here's the... Uh, here's the next part, alright? which is really weird. When you square this out, it's x multiplied by 3.25 multiplied by another x multiplied by 3.25. Is that cool with you guys? All right. And <clears throat> what you get here, yeah, the numbers are awful in this question. x squared minus 6.5x. And then 3.25 squared is 169 over 16. And then the other part is y squared minus 12y plus 36 equals this 745 over 16. Now, do you know what's interesting? Is that, see this side here, see the blue, see the blue parts? When you add them together, it actually equals the blue part from the other side. So guess what your answer will be? Anybody? Just x squared plus y squared minus 6.85x minus 12y equals 0. Is that kill you guys? Now, uh, Charlie, I will say one thing, all right? It's not the most time effective way. The other method is faster and quicker, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll show you the other method now, okay? So that's for the lads at home. The only other thing about the other lads at home is you could you could have also used uh, you could have also used BC as your card and got another equation through the line to do the to do a simultaneous equation. That's also allowed, right? But for most of us, sorry, just going. So for most of us, uh, most of us adapted the uh, simultaneous equation method for doing this. So most of us adapted the. Uh, x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. Everybody cool with that? What happens when you sub in 0, 0? Zero? 0 squared plus 0 squared uh, Liam, I was it you who wrote down minus 2gx minus 2fy? So just use your log tables and make sure that that's uh, all above board before you go in. You, you did everything else perfectly. Like, uh, yeah, but it, it's two mistakes making the right answer if you get what I'm saying. So, C equals zero. <coughs> Is that okay with you guys? Now what's the next thing you do then? Yeah, just, just, just put in 6.5 squared this time. If uh, somebody has this correct, you can help me out. Speed me up. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, What's a 2FY still, is it? Or 
it'd be zero, won't it? And C is zero as well. So what did you get? 13G minus 42 point. Excellent. Everybody see that? And what's the G value then? Uh, divided by 13, no? okay now what's the next thing we're going to do substitute in 10 and is everybody happy we're going to substitute in 10 and 7 so this method here Charlie is just is considered to be faster generally speaking so we'll give you more time to do other questions later in the exam but it's good to know about methods though to be honest right so that's going to be 10 squared which is 107 squared which is 49. Uh, we're going to lob in the G value right away. So minus 2 times 3.25. Uh, what's it? Times 10. Let me give me an answer for that. Is it minus 65, is it? Somebody use a calculator for me. 2FY is 14Y. The C value is 0. I'm hoping I get 14Y. Yeah. And then we get 14y equals uh, minus 84. And then y value equals. Oh, sorry, not the y value, the f value. Sorry, it's f, not y. Uh, f equals minus 6, anybody? Did anybody do it that way and get that far? Dylan and Evan did it that way, got pretty far, alright? Now, what's the next thing you need? I think we have everything we want, do we? Let's do the equation. Okay, what's x squared? x squared is x squared. y squared is y squared. Two times, uh, two times minus 3.25. 6.5x. Uh, two times uh, f. C value. Is that okay? Cool, cool, cool. We are good. Now, what's the next question? Find the angle BCA. No bother. Uh, will you give me the three values again? What's uh, A? Zero, zero, is it? Yeah. B? Uh, yeah. And C? C is 7, 10, 7? Thanks. Right. So essentially you're looking for this, lads. Uh, A to B. No, no, you're looking for C in the middle. So you're looking for B, C, and A, C. So A, C would be look like this. And what would B, C look like? B, C would look like 6150. And then up like that. So imagine this. Oh, sorry. Okay. Imagine that's A. Imagine that's B. And this is point C. Is that alright? You want the angle BCA. Is everybody happy to just call it theta? Okay. Now, we can get the slope of each one, can't we? How do we get the slopes? Huh? So what do we do there? Slope of? Is everybody happy to get in the slope of AC and the slope of BC? Is that cool, you guys? Using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Is that all right with you guys? Now, here's the issue, okay? The slope of BC will turn out to be 2 if you do it properly which I, I all expect you can do. And the slope of uh, AC will be 7 over 10. And does anybody know a formula for getting the angle between two lines? Equals what? M1 times M2. Okay. Here's what you're going to do. Tan theta. 
is therefore equal to plus or minus, what are we going to say, 7 over 10? Minus 2 all over. 1 plus 2 times. Going to put all that into the calculator. What? And because it's plus or minus the answer, do you get what I'm saying? You can do either or. So if I do the negative one, if I do the negative one, I get an answer of minus 28. It's like, what does that even mean? But if I do it this way, the plus one, the answer is it's 28.44 degrees, which is the acute angle. That's 28.44. But the obtuse angle, which is uh, this angle here, that would be 180 take away 28.44. Is that okay with you guys? Now, sorry, I know we're sort of just out of time now. Uh,